there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. The term culture originates from the Latin word cultivate. Communities are generally made up of people who share cultural characteristics. These cultural characteristics are defined by various influences, including geographical, spiritual, and agricultural considerations. Certain cultures impose distinct limitations or boundaries that make them unique. The purpose of this program is to introduce you to the most interesting and unique cultures from around the world. To the east of the Czech Republic lies the picturesque Moravia. Its individual regions are very diverse. The flat lands of Hana give way to hillsides and vineyards, which in turn make room for the steep slopes of Kopanica on the Moravian Silesian boundary. The whole region has one thing in common, the people. They are all hardworking, they love to sing, and they appreciate a bottle of wine. In today's episode, we will visit several such lovely nooks along the Moravia River. The Moravian poet, Oldrich Mikulaszek, speaks of Hana as a terrible flatland where the stars always seem further. But most will agree that the vast rolling fields seem more like the surface of the open ocean. Dotting this seemingly never-ending flatland are some real cultural and artistic gems. A few are to be found in the capital of Hana, Olomots. In Komoritz, you must simply take a stroll in the remarkable Baroque flower garden. The St. John Stone Bridge in Litovel is the third oldest in the Czech Republic. The locals believe that this bridge symbolically connects the shores of the River Moravia, which gives name to this land. The river meanders, bending to the left and right as it flows along. These bends in the river are one of the more interesting features found in the Litovel Pomoravi National Park. The history of the Holly Mount near Olomouc dates back to the 17th century. At that time, Europe was in the middle of the Thirty Years' War, from 1618 to 1648. During that period, a townsman and wine merchant by the name of Jan Andrzejczyk built a chapel, the location of which appeared to him in a dream that included the Virgin Mary. In time, this chapel became a large monastery complex and a pilgrimage site. Pope John Paul II promoted the Church of the Visitation of the Virgin Mary to a minor basilica. From the time the area was first settled, it seems like Olomouc has always been in competition with Brno for the right to be considered the capital of Moravia. The first University of Moravia was established in Olomouc towards the end of the 16th century, and the city was promoted from bishopric to archbishopric some 100 years later. The Column of the Holy Trinity, together with the Marian Column of the Baroque Fountains, were included on the UNESCO World Heritage List in the year 2000. Also on the list are the Kromaritz Bishop's Palace and the Podzemeka Flower Gardens, which are examples of the early Baroque style. The flower garden was created using the geometrical style of French gardens. Hana 
Tana has been populated by more than just stubborn church dignitaries. Someone had to utilize the fertile land all over Moravia. The captivating detail of the local folk costumes demonstrates the importance and significance of their attire. On the other hand, the Hanachka Folklore Ensemble seeks to ensure that the cultural heritage of their ancestors is maintained. Here, they are celebrating a real Hana wedding in all its glory. According to tradition, the bride is actually meant to be sad, for it is said, a bride that is merry at her wedding shall be sad in her marriage. The bride is accompanied by her bridesmaids, and the groom is accompanied by his best men. Both the bride and groom have those who speak for them. The bridesmaids and the best men were dressed the same as the bride and groom, so as to confuse the ever-present evil forces. The entire ceremony is accompanied by music. It is essential to drink a toast to every important occasion, and weddings are no exception. The tying of a scarf onto the bride's head symbolizes her acceptance into the sorority of the village women. The riches of the land are reflected in the folk costumes. Wheat, hops, poppy, and corn are among the crops that are grown in Hana. A bountiful harvest is always essential. Windmills were used to grind the wheat. The locals, always grateful to the land, also respected the animals, which were their beasts of burden. After all, no homestead could ultimately survive without these animals. The very first written record of Loshtitsa comes from the end of the 13th century. We are reminded of its rich history thanks to the church of St. Prokop with its well-preserved historical archives. A woodcarver by the name of Yaroslav Benesh lives here. He is considered a new age woodworm. In his studio, he carves statues, furniture, and other wonderful artifacts. His life's accomplishment, however, is the Loshtitse nativity scene. The wooden figures that accompanying the birth of Jesus depicts the natives of Hana as they live both today and in the past. This is where the world-famous Loshtitsa Olomushke Tevarushke ripened soft cheese is made. This cheese has always been made from leftover milk. It is sold on the open market in Olomuz. This cheese is also the source of the town's name, Olomushke. Nowadays, this cheese is made exclusively by the AW Company, which was established 150 years ago. Obviously, the cheese still enjoys great popularity.
It is said that one can either love or hate Tevarushke. Once tasted, the memory of this cheese will remain at least as long as the memory of the beauties of Hana. We leave the endless flatland of Hana, a place that gave birth to both a great culture and a rich tradition. We head on further, following the current of the Moravia River to Slovatsko, a region known for good wine and colorful folklore. Hana shares a boundary with Slovatsko, which you find when you follow the current of the Moravia River. This ethnographic area is divided into several subregions according to the relief of the landscape, the specific culture, the dialect spoken, the folk music, the traditional architecture, and of course, according to the folk costumes. We shall visit Dolnatsko, Hornatsko, and Kopanice. Dolnatsko, as the translation of the name suggests, is a region of lowlands near the Moravia River. Hornatsko is made up of nine villages scattered over the slopes of the White Carpathian Mountains near the border with Slovakia. Kopanice acquired its name from the inaccessible little fields that could only be cultivated manually, sitting on the steep slopes. Despite their historical diversity, the Slovatsko regions do have a few things in common. They greatly respect women, excellent wine, and poignant songs. In pre-modern times, it was common for the people of Moravia to leave their homes in May in order to mow the meadows and pastures. They slept under the stars and would start cutting at dawn when, after a cool night, the grass was still heavy with dew. To pass the time, they would sing songs containing numerous verses, these so-called mower's songs best suited the rhythm of the mowing. This traditional singing lives on through the annual meeting of mowers and occurs near the Behovlitsa Palace. The best mowers vie to achieve the best mowed bit of grass. People come from far and wide and with all manners of shapes and sizes to appreciate the opportunity to enjoy the lovely scent of freshly cut grass, meet up with friends, sing favorite songs, and have a glass of their favorite something. The winner of the mowers tournament deserves a sweet, liquid reward. Wine, the focal point of all activity in Dolnatsko. Vineyards adorn every even remotely suitable hillside. Had there been twice as many vineyards, it would not have been enough. More than four and a half thousand hectares are taken up by vineyards, and they preoccupy the time of some 9,000 people. One of the many family vineyards here belongs to the Vajura family from Poleshovice. With just two employees and a bunch of seasonal workers, they still manage to produce annually half a million bottles of excellent quality wine. The inhabitants of Kuzhelov in Hornatsko are proud of their well-preserved Dutch origin windmill. However, today it serves for exposition purposes only. Hornatsko has far less economic strength than Donatsko. Life, therefore, is considerably tougher here. Fortunately, both the people and their music are quite hearty. The most prominent local musician is the gypsy violinist Joschka Kubik. He even has a statue built in his honor, the only statue in the Czech Republic depicting a gypsy.
the less than fertile earth forced the natives to use all means possible to survive. Weaving is among the many local crafts found here. In some of the households, the manner of weaving follows the time-honored tradition of bygone eras. But let us return to Donatsko, and specifically to Vechnov, where the wine is splendid and one tradition in particular stands out. The locals call the wine cellars huts, the oldest of which comes from the 17th century. This is where the wine has always been processed. The front room is used to press the wine, the casks with the wine are in the back, and the attic was used to dry and store hay. It all begins outside these huts on the eve of the Yizda Kraulu, the ride of the kings. The tension is washed away with a glass of cool white or fiery red wine. A party is not a party without good wine and great music. When you're in Slovatsko, the music can only come from a cymbalom band. A cymbalom band is usually led by a lead violinist accompanied by the other members of the band, a second violinist, viola, contrabass, and of course, the cymbalom itself. The rhythm is set by the cymbalom together with the contrabass, and thus, the harmonic fundamental is created. A clarinet player is in charge of the melody. People hearing the music cannot help but sing along. The main character of the Vechnov, Ride of the Kings, is the four young people appointed to represent the young rulers. The ethnographers have it that the Ride of the Kings was a kind of international ritual, whereby the boys crossed into manhood. Once the horses are decorated in paper roses and the people are dressed in their appropriate folk costumes, the procession of the Legruts heads towards the kings. In the meanwhile, the rulers are dressed in women's clothing as a disguise. The legroots are the equivalent of the king's mounted guard. They demand financial gifts from the onlookers. This custom is passed on from father to son over generations. The king is forbidden to utter a word and so as not to forget, he holds a rose in his teeth. In one of the versions of this legend, the Hungarian king, Matthias Korovinus, dressed as a woman, ran back to Hungary having lost the battle with George of Podobrandy. He unintentionally revealed his identity when he spoke. That is why the king holds a rose in his teeth, so as to remember to keep his mouth shut. The entire region comes alive through this celebration, and it is a tempting tourist attraction as well. Should you wish to witness for yourself a colorful procession which seems to emerge from one of the famous paintings of Joža Uprik, then this is the place to be. Amazing, richly blue original fabrics come to life in a fabric dyeing workshop far away from the noisy crowd. The blueprint technique is a unique method of dyeing fabric. It has been the traditional method of fabric dyeing in Straznica. The family company Joch has been making it here for a very long time. 
Mr. Joch inherited the profession from his father and also expanded his education and expertise by attending arts and craft studies in Prague. Blueprint is still done entirely manually. Machines are only marginally used. The fabric must be cotton. The pattern is derived by using a special matrix that has a glue made from a secret formula spread on it. It is then dried and subsequently dyed using indigo dye. The color intensifies when it comes in contact with air. Once the fabric has dried, it is washed in a solution of hydrochloric acid. The acid dissolves the glue and the beautiful original is ready. While the primary product of honeybees is honey, the secondary product is beeswax. Beeswax is an incredible raw material. Only bees are capable of making it from honey and pollen. A skilled pair of hands can create small artistic wonders out of this wax. Since the beginning of recorded history, wax candles have brought light into darkness and seem to have the power to brighten even the darkest nooks of the human soul. It must also have something to do with their lovely scent. At the center of Kopenice, the poorest region of all Slovatsko, is Stary Horozenikov. This hilly landscape was only populated in the second half of the 18th century by settlers from Hungary and Slovakia. Even today, the region remains more similar to its Slovak neighbors than to its compatriots in Donatsko. Here, residents must be quite self-reliant, as dwellings are often few and far between. Dealing with everyday problems takes on a different dimension when you must cope without much help. Farmer Libor Krochkil inherited more than just his farm from his wise grandmother. He also was the beneficiary of plenty of good common sense advice from her. He is going to train his heifer to pull timber from the woods. Of course, the harness must first be put in place and secured. It may seem otherwise, but Mr. Krochkill does look after his animals with dedication and care and would never harm his cows. The Kopanice celebration takes place in Stary Horozenikov. It is a unique celebration of this distinctive region and its people who have learned to survive in tough conditions and yet have not forgotten how to enjoy the simple things in life, at the center of which is singing and dancing.